Hey, fail submission peeps. In today's video, we'll be doing one of the easiest and most profitable items that you'll uh, use throughout die sublimation, which are mouse pads. These are just eighth inch, uh, I believe. There's, there's a ton of people that carry them. I'll go ahead and drop some links in the description below on where you can pick these up. Uh, they're very cheap to do. Um, it, it's a good learning. If you're new to sublimation, it's a good thing to learn on because if you mess them up, it's not a, not a huge investment or anything. Um, but yeah, we'll go through the process of uh, measuring for the template, creating the graphic, printing the graphic, and then heat pressing everything, and we'll do a final wrap up and everything. Um, so without further ado, uh, this is how you do it. The first step in making the template is to go ahead and measure it. And based on this, we know that nine and a half will be plenty. And we're gonna go right at eight inches tall. And that'll give us about a quarter inch overlap on all, all four sides. So that should be more than enough to, uh, to take care of us. So we'll go ahead and get that designed and get that printed. All right, guys, and just like we measured, um, it's eight by nine and a half, um, 300 DPI, so you get nice, crisp and clear uh, results out of that. And, and how I made this composite, uh, just a an image of the video game, Rocket League. Um, and you got a couple of alternating stripes, various opacities, um, a layer of green on top of that to kind of dull everything down, and then the layer on top of that. And that's how we make that composite for the mouse pad. Um, and we'll be printing this at, let's see, printing on 8.5 by 11 paper, uh, premium presentation mat, high quality. Uh, we're going to be mirroring the image as always, and nothing else special on that. That's pretty much it. Uh, we're going to be doing ICM. Where's that at? Under settings, so more options. It's under advanced. We're going to be doing color management. We're going to be doing ICM. Uh, but yeah, I'll go ahead and send this to the printer and we'll catch you on the other side. Uh, the first step, obviously, is to go ahead and lint roll. Go ahead and get all of our stuff off. Go ahead and lint roll the stew. And we do this pretty much on anything fabric. Just to get any hairs off, because as you know, any hairs will dice up bright blue. And it, it sucks to have a perfectly think good thing ruined by a couple of bright, uh, bright blue streaks. So... Yep, good and clean, we got that situated. Uh, the next step is to go ahead and cut our paper. Luckily on this one, there won't be much cutting at all. Uh, we can basically just put it up there, get it good and even, and just give them a little chop chop. Just like that. That's good enough, that's good enough, that, that works. No problem at all there. So we'll go ahead and move this over to the uh, to the heat press. All right, guys. Um, if you know me at all, you know what we're gonna do. We're gonna put uh, some protection paper on bottom. This is just uh, this is just regular old butcher paper, uncoated. Nothing special. You can find it down in the link below. We're gonna do a piece of copy paper, and we're gonna go ahead and pre-press our uh, our mouse pad for about ten seconds. So we'll go ahead and put them on there. And this is just to get any moisture out and avoid any issues that may come up. Put our birch paper on top of it. Just give it a nice pre-press for about 10 seconds. That's too much pressure. There we go. If you can close it with two hands, you're good. Pretty firm pressure on these uh, to make them work. And now that that's done, we'll go ahead and... Yeah, we had a little bit of moisture in that. That's okay though. And it's going to be a little warm to the touch. A little warm. So, what we do now, go ahead and get our paper ready. 
and again, this is one of the very few things that I tape. So what I do is let the mouse pad cool for a minute. Go ahead and put him on there. Actually, let's wait another minute. Let that mouse pad cool. Get us, get us two pieces of tape ready. And really, I, I just tape it just so the just to keep it in place. When I flip it over, because you have to print these face up. Absolutely must. So we're going to put one in each corner. And we're going to make sure that all four corners have a little bit of overlap. Yep. We are good. We are super good. And we're doing butcher paper, copy paper, uh, mouse pad, sublimation paper, and another piece of copy paper. And then finally, our other piece of butcher paper, make sure everything's good and tight on there. We're doing it at 380 degrees. And we're going to do it for 70 seconds. Alrighty. Now we're about ready to take this off. Uh, we're gloving up because this is going to be extremely hot. Uh, that rubber gets really hot. So once that does, we're going to go ahead and do that. They usually don't stick or anything. So usually it's pretty straightforward. And we just take the paper right off. And there's our mouse pad. And it's going to smoke. It's going to stink a little bit. But overall, you know, good stuff. Just as you expect. Pretty good stuff. And that's how it looks. Nice, clean, and colors are spot on. Makes me very happy. All right, guys. Really happy with the output of this. Uh, the mouse pad looks fantastic. Nice, clean, crisp, exactly what you want to see in a die sub print. Um, our eagle-eyed viewers, pun intended, absolutely. Uh, we'll notice that that's the, it's not like a Philadelphia Eagle logo or anything. It's not, it's not for a high school even. It's actually for the, for the team that I managed the origin league for, the Frontier Doubles League. It's a, it's a Rocket League team. It's a, it's, it's a gaming community. Um, and I'll go ahead and show, uh, show a quick clip of, of one of the games that I play in. It's hard to get those. Uh, open nets unless you just hit it with everything you have but then you have the risk of uh, booming it over the net you know you really have to find that middle ground of what's good southpaw's up for that one gonna tie up the game great shot from southpaw not the best touch from sticks just puts it on his own backboard tees that one up and southpaw is not gonna miss beautiful placement just between the bar and jalapeno and prosperity but he does get a save following closely behind that ball to make sure he doesn't get dunked Good play from Prosperity there, and Folly's going to be able to get this away. That pressure coming out from the Marlins, that offensive rotation, good synergy there. Folly, the solo play, double touch off the backboard, extends this lead to three. What a shot there on the setup from Prosperity. Overall, Rocket League's, uh, it's been a staple of my life since like 2016, so um, I really wouldn't know what to do without it, <laughs> to be honest, at this point. Um, I guess I'd make more YouTube videos or something. I don't know. But yeah, um, if you want to, feel free to to follow me over there. Uh, check out the league if, if Rocket League's your thing. It's very unlikely, but you know, you never know. But yeah, all right, guys, I appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. If you like this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up. Owl. <laughs> and feel free to subscribe. And feel free to subscribe. Owl! <laughs>